Hi everybody. Long time no see. Um, I'm still here. I'm still Rebecca. I'm still in my kitchen. As my husband points out, I think he thinks that my subscribers are a little tired of seeing me in the kitchen, but that's where are you going to, where are you going to find me, particularly this time of the year. Um, I just cleared my counter yesterday behind me. I had 19 jars of sassy zucchini relish. I'm not complaining. I'm sort of kind of buried in my zucchini this year. Certainly not going to complain. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's really wonderful. My, our garden is doing really well this year. Um, we're back in the middle of we're canning almost. Well, every week we're canning a couple things every week. Um, but I had to take some time out today away from my canning and back to some of my witchy housekeeping, which is very, very important. I, I, had, to, I had to attend to. And I thought um, you could maybe come along for some of that ride with me. I don't know what life is like for you right now. I hope you're all doing well and healthy. I know a lot of us have gone back into some kind of quarantine. It's a scary time. It's a confusing time. But um, we're, we're kind of in that in-between place here where we are still being very cautious and wearing masks, etc., trying to get everybody vaccinated. But also we've sort of opened ourselves up to doing some things back to normal within uh, reason. One of the things that we have, Joe and I, have gotten back into recently is a meeting with our our group, our coven, and uh, for ritual. And but of course, it's had to be. We've had to make a little bit of a few uh, adjustments, but it, it's been wonderful since we have been apart for a year and a half to be able to meet together. But um, with the new setups come some new problems. And one of the problems we've had is um, candles. We use candles all the time. And candles, of course, in indoors is one thing. Candles in outside is a completely different thing. We've had some rituals outside. We've had to adapt to using different kinds of things. And then, of course, we have other situations where we're indoors, but the windows are wide open, wide open, so we have a lot of ventilation. And we had a ritual here not too long ago, and I had, we set up for, when we do rituals, we set up quarters as well as the central altar. And this is what I got. <laughs> you know what this is, I've showed you before. This is every, it's a part of our lives as witches, we always have, um, we always have accidents on our cloths and things, our altar cloths. I've spilt wax, I've melted wax, or all kinds of other things. There's no big deal about it, but um, in our everyday things, my altar cloths in my room, on my spell tables, and even on for my use for my main altars, they have a lot of stain on them, a lot of <laughs> problems, some holes maybe. But that's okay, I just think it kind of adds to the witchiness. But when we set up for a ritual, we like things to be as nice as possible. We use our best. It's like using your best china, so to speak. And these are my beautiful, our beautiful quarter cloths that we put on the quarter tables. And they're linen. Of course, they're very lovely linen. But the weave in linen makes it also a real bitch to get the, the wax out of. And I don't want to leave it quite like this. So I'm going to have to tend to that. But regardless of that, I have, am revisiting, okay, what can we do now? Because no matter what, um, we've tried other things, putting plates underneath dishes. It's very easy to catch the wax because what happens is it's not the candles blowing out that we're having a problem with, and there's not even that much of a breeze really coming in the window. It's just the air being around the air. But it causes from all of that um, source of oxygen, I guess, the candles just burn fast, and they puddle very quickly. So, we're, if we don't start with being a candle, we're really, by the time the ritual has ended, we're pretty much, the candles are gone. We, can, we would either have to um, change them in between or, or something. So anyway, um, we're, we're coming up with some different things, and I decided to 
to revisit the idea of using container candles on the altar, at least uh, particularly on the quarters and the quarter tables. Now I've done some, I did a video, I think it was about five years ago here on this on YouTube, which I think has a lot, I had a good bit to say about candles. <laughs> I was talking about different kinds of candles. I mostly was talking about tapers and pillars and the idea of using dyes in, in, in scents and candles. But, and I was doing a lot of experimenting making my own candles, which I still do from time to time. I don't make tapers. I do make um, pillars and votives but they usually only black ones because I find, I found them Votives I can make different colors. I'll make for I'll make green, I'll make some for prosperity ultra. I'll make green votives too. Um, but mostly I'm limiting myself to black because I can't for the larger candles. The I can get good black pillars, good quality black pillars. I mean black tapers, but black pillars. i it's a little problematic and the cost is pretty high. So I make those when I can. But container candles, I pretty much just play the roulette wheel with container candles. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And that is because I do have a, a good heavy supply of, of containers. Um, I showed you in the last video these Novena candles, um, which we are so plentiful everywhere. I know you can get them where you are too. We have them everywhere here. Um, I use them all the time on well it, uh, on my on our healing altar all the time to offer special prayers we use them all the time because there's always a good prayer you can get on them we use some you know depending on who we're what the intention of our of our prayer is particularly for healing for people um, or for pets very common for pets. And I love them, and particularly the one I use on the altar that I have for my pets, because I keep it, um, I, I, I uh, consecrate it before I use it. And then of course, every time I go to burn, every day that I, during the period of time I'm burning it, because I don't let them just burn out in the house, I don't do that. Um, like it so at night they would be, they would be extinguished. But they relight it again. I just, you know, add more, of, I consecrate again with a little more of the oil. And then of course in the flame, I say um, intention as I sprinkle into the flame, I usually an incense of some kind or a blend of some kind, herb of some kind into the flame, depending on what my intention is. Just a little tiny bit. And here you can see, maybe you can see the little bits of along the outside of little herb stuff sort of stuck in there. So, and then mind you that this candle is used only for that, only for that. Now we've all had some kind of nightmares with these kind of candles because they're cheap. I talk a little bit more about it in the video of five years ago. Um, I really, I want to remember, I have to remember to link that. I really want to remember to link that for you because it's really an informative video, I believe. But anyway, um, I've, I've had some experiences. I've had them where they just don't, they don't light or they explode or they whatever. I've had some weird things happen. We all have. And there's a lot of information out there, <laughs> out there on the internet and things among people um, as to why, which I talked a little bit about that in the other video. But suffice it to say that for most people, they're a little bit uh, misinformed because most often, uh, other than blaming spirits and things, most often the container is blamed, where people are afraid to reuse containers. Now, um, I'm not a member of the industry, so I don't know for sure. All I do know is, I know from the canning community, the, the, the people uh, here on YouTube particularly, who are avid canners, who can every day, practically of the year, who they, 
a lot of them are homesteaders whose who's the family's um, survival depends on their they're preserving their foods from that they grow, etc. Um, a lot of them stand by the fact that that jars are not that superior to other jars. Some are heavily heavy made, heavily made, more heavily made perhaps. But to make the, the science of making glass is the science of making glass. And other than it being very thin or very something like that, it's usually glass is glass. And um, glass can withstand heat. There's differences. Some glass, it, it's thermal. It doesn't uh, transmit heat. Maybe you can hold it and it won't make, burn your hand better than others. But I think that has to do with more of the thickness. I'm not sure. Please don't um, attack me in the comment section if you know more about glass than I do because it's not really about glass that I want to talk to you about. All, other than to say that glass is so easily maligned saying if you use a good quality glass, it won't happen. X won't happen. So a lot of people say use these one time and throw them away. Well, they also say use candy lids one time and throw them away and there's a lot of people that reuse candy lids. As long as they continue to seal, there's no problem. It's when the seal does, it fails that you have the problem. And it's likewise when the, gra when the glass can't hold the candle anymore, can't stand the heat, it might break. That, I guess that's probably what we're talking about. It's more, I think most accidents like that that happen with glass breaking has more to do with damage in the glass somehow. I do know even a heavy duty canning jar, like a ball jar, mason jar, um, just a very, a lot of people when we can, they take, I have a jar here, just have an apple in my kitchen. <laughs> Um, they'll take a knife, a butter knife, you know, we want to get the bubbles out before we can, so they'll take a knife and they'll go around the outside and people will say, well, don't use a metal knife because that metal knife over time hitting the bottom, hitting the bottom, hitting the bottom might weaken the glass. And some people have had it happen, so one time they open the canner and the bottom of their jar is laying on the bottom of the canner. It has happened. I've had that happen to me once. So most of the time they say use a plastic or wooden uh, implement to, to release your bubbles, like a chopstick or something like that, or skewer. Um, so the same could hold true for these candles, that it could be weakening, just weakening, banging around, whatever, that is causing them to break. So that's not necessarily the problem. I want to say that most of the problems, I believe, because I've done quite a bit of research into candle making, and I have said this, I said this in the previous video, I will stand by it again, not in terribly much detail, but I will say that the things that are very important, more important than what kind of glass you're using, maybe, is, or container that you're using, is what kind of wax are you putting in the candle, are you using to make the candle, and what kind of wick, what kind of wick and size of wick are you using. Um, also, are you using a lot of uh, is there a lot of fragrance or a lot of color? All of those things affect the efficiency of your candle. So it's not, I think it's not a coincidence that most of the problems that we have with candles, we have with things that are heavily colored. When like I have with my black candle or I have here with dark, dark colors. Uh, excuse me. Please forgive the interruption. My dog was offended when I banged the, camp, the candle on the table. He thought somebody was intruding upon us. It was me. <laughs> um, what I was trying to say is the culprit in you, when you have a fail in your can, candle, it's, more, it's usually due to some other thing other than the glass. We have, and there I am, and then he's going to bark. I hope not. Um, most of the accidents that I've had had used colored glass or something in them. But regardless, you can, we might not know the, the reason for the accident, but we can do a lot we can do, there's a lot we can do to prevent potential accidents, just playing a little bit safe, particularly with candles. Um, I think I said my, my message in my previous video was that, um, 
when you when you don't when you don't um, spend enough money on your on your on your candle in the first place, you can't expect great quality usually. <laughs> in order to get quality, you usually have to spend more money. That's not always the case, but your little the chances are better. Or keep buying from the same source all the time. Find a source that you really trust and buy from them all the time. And I've done that pretty much with my tapers. That I really trust my tapers when I buy them. Because we use tapers more than we use anything. And I really want to be able to depend on them. But as far as the container goes, I don't have a lot of experience with container candles. Mostly just with my Dovina candles. I don't normally use them for other purposes. So that's where I was coming from today. I was thinking, well, I want to try to, I want to try it, at least in this period of time when the windows are open and we're having this issue in our ritual space with these candles completely just melting down as fast as we can, as fast as they can go. We want the, the candle to at least um, last through the ritual. So um, I have a few things that I, I just did, did some research and of course, there's a lot of things you can do. You can use these jars over again. It's possible to use these jars over again, at least to try to use them over again. Nothing wrong with that. I'm willing to try. But the, but the wax that goes inside has a special blend for containers. That's very important. When I talk about a special wax, I'm not talking about paraffin or soy. I'm talking about a special wax that is blended to use in kind of a container because it's, it's, it's meant to melt and become liquid and then that liquid just goes away, right? Goes away, goes away. It, if you see, whenever you watch a tea light, a tea light, it, it goes away, you, after the tea light is gone, you shouldn't find anything, it should be completely empty. Well, the same really is supposed to go, hold true really for a, a candle in a container, okay? So it's a special kind of a wax and I have a couple candles here that I have purchased years ago this is how often I use them I don't know if it'll show up on camera I'm hoping so um, maybe the blue one will show up better um, they're very it's a mess it's a more of a gel it's a softer wax than you find in a candle because it doesn't have to hold its shape a candle remember in a taper or a um, pillar candle block candle whatever you want to call it it has to hold its shape as it burns, it doesn't melt into a puddle. It just it just slowly gets diminishes in size. A container candle, it it the part that's melting is clear and it, and it dissipates dissipates as it goes down. And we can see in this candle, there's a lot of bubbles. It's just like more of a gel. I could almost push on it, and it's very soft. This one. Seems like a harder wax. This seems more like a candle, I think, and it even kind of moved when I had it in there. I know I've seen where you can buy replacement um, candles to put inside your containers. I don't know if those are right or not. I don't know if those are good or not. Are they made out of the right wax? I'm not sure. I would want to do a little research or a little experimentation with it before maybe experiment burning it before I put it on an altar and, and depend on it for, to burn properly during a ritual, for say, or during a spell. You really don't want to have a, some, your equipment failure during a spell because then you need to start the spell all over again usually. But So I think it's a good idea when you get a candle, if you purchase a container candle of any kind, that you give it a, um, you give it a test run to see how it's going to burn for you. Okay, so anyway, I'm so unfamiliar with these candles that I don't know if this looks right or not. What I do know is I have spent some money lately and I have purchased, I have a big box here sitting, it's been in my kitchen for a while, um, some supplies to make container candles. And I'm going to attempt to use, to reuse the containers that I have, which I really like the size. These are nice sizes. But I like this size too because we some these are really lovely for quarter, for quarter, for your quarters. Um, if you set up those kind of things, or it would be good for like a spell over a period of a couple, you know, not too long. Not how many hours this would burn. I'd have to figure that out. But um, I like the size. 
But what I like about these, I have done in the past, like just, uh, I'm sort of talking in circles here because I'm thinking, sorry. Just like I took this candle, I, I took an old uh, candle at one time long ago and for different purposes. And here I have an image of Carnunas on the, on the front here that I just took off the internet and then I applied to the, uh, to the glass of this candle, which was blank. It was a blank candle like this without anything on it that I purchased, but you can just re-pour into here and add your own label. This candle, the same kind of jar uh, that I just picked up, but this was, I can't even remember what, I brought this home from a ritual or something. I don't know. This is not my handwriting, it's somebody else's. It has the element of earth, the word earth written on it, some uh, sigils written on it and had something that was wet, but it started out with grounding something, which is, you know, the, the which would be the, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what it was from, because it's, it's a red candle. We don't usually, I don't usually associate red with the, with, uh, the element of earth, but I, it could be anything. It could be from anything. But anyway, we always bring these, if you have ever been in groups or gone into public rituals or any kind, you're always bringing things home, which are so meaningful at the time, and then after a while, you just kind of forget what they were for. This is one of them. I apologize to whoever did this, but this is a good idea, you know, to put some kind of something to indicate what your intention is for this candle. Okay. So anyway, these are really lovely. And then I thought, you know, I was looking around because all I have, I have lots of these that I can reuse. And then I have four of these that I have for some reason, which I like this size. But then I was thinking, oh, it'd be nice to have something in between. Because we usually use, um, we'll use a, uh, sometimes we use a, the um, directional candle and an offering candle together. And I like the juxtaposition of the tall and the short, but sometimes there's one in between. More like the height of my high ski glass here. The shorter, which I kind of like. But, okay, but, um, so I was looking for candles and then I realized that, well, the issue here is all of the ones that were in between sizes, or all the ones I could buy, for instance. See, this, these two candles, I don't know if you can see, but these both, the, the diameter inside is the same. Okay? And, um, I kind of am jumping ahead of myself, I think, but when you research the wick, in order to do the wick, this is the problem that people fall into. The wick... I use the same size wick here as I do here, and I don't mean the same. Like this is this tall, and this is this is four inches, and this one is what eight inches. Well, how can that be? Well, size doesn't go by length. Size goes by size diameter, your thickness of the wick. First of all, wicks are different, made differently. Some have wire core, some have just braided um, cotton, some have you know, whatever, they're, they're made differently. There's a certain particular kind of wick that is good for container candles. Different than the wick that is used in other candles, perhaps. This is where you need to research because you wouldn't use the same. But even if you could use the same kind, I don't know, other, other factors lead into the decision affect your decision. For instance, do you have scent in your candle or do you have color? If you have color in your candle, you need a different size because deep, deep, deep colors, often the burn is affected. It's, and it's a little harder to burn, get it to burn. So you need a little bigger wick sometimes in the darker ones, I think. Lighter candles like white or, or color, maybe like yellow, not so much. I don't know. I don't really use yellow candles too much, but I certainly have them. <laughs> um, 
but my problem was I found some containers that were in between these two sizes. I thought, oh, that's lovely. But they had a different diameter. These have a diameter of about two inches, about, uh, which takes a certain size wick. Um, the jars that I found have a, a wick, I mean a diameter of three and a quarter inches. Um, so they use a different size wick. A lot of people use canning jars. Now I'm not gonna use a canning jar probably because my canning jars are pretty busy right now being other things, but I'm not saying you can't use a canning jar. And I know a lot of people use this successfully. My daughter used canning jars in her wedding for her wedding, which were, it was wonderful. They looked wonderful. And you know, you can reuse them. You can make put a candle in here and after it's done, you can use the canning jar. Just like we can can in them over and over again. You can, you know, use them again. So it's not that it's a waste. It's just that mine are busy. <laughs> mine are busy. So, but the problem is, while this and this, they look different, don't they? This is your jelly jar, which is a half pint. And this is a pint, standard pint. The diameter is the same in the lids. The diameter is the same. So these two use the same size wick. Okay. But then there are candle, then there are canning jars that use, this is called a wide mouth. And although it holds about the same as this pretty much, a lot different, a lot different in the diameter. This takes a much bigger wick than this. Sometimes it might even take two, depending on how big round it is. Okay. So I can't reuse the same wick in all of my sizes. I can reuse the same wick for these two. But if I'm going to do something else, I have to change my wick size. Okay. So that's a little bit of a complication. That makes it a little more um, of a nuisance when you're trying to do candles, especially if you're trying to do it all the time. You have to use the same. You have to really pay attention and say, these are the wicks um, that I have um, for these for this size. And this is then if I want to do it another size, I've got to get another wick and keep those separate. Okay. Um, it's not a it's not a huge problem, but it's just something you have to keep in mind. Have to keep in mind. Um, I did get from this company um, some of these pre tabbed They're called pre tabbed books, which I really like. I use these in my photos, but they're short. But these, the reason I like them is they're already they already they already have the tab on the end. And if you ever look on the bottom of a, you can really see it in the bottom of a lot of candles, but on the bottom of a, a, a tea, inside the tea light, you'll see this. Or in the bottom of a votive, you see this all the time. I think I showed you on my, the video that I keep referring back to, <laughs> that I did show you what that looks like in the candle. But these are pre, already pre-waxed. And they're already, and they're, they're long. They're long enough that I could use it and a jar this size. Okay, so the idea is you put, you, you get it placed in there and you center it and then you, um, oh, here we can see the tab in the bottom of that. You see the tab, we use the tab in that one. And the wick is nice and centered. That's what's important. And then after it's all done, you, you trim the wet wick to size. Um, the reason it's important to center the wick is that how is another thing that aids its burning. This one, oh, this is a good example. I don't know if you can see, but this wick is clear over here. This is the, not centered. I mean, if I can, not centered at all. And if you can see that, that's going to be a real problem when I go to. Um, When I go to burn it, it's going to be a real problem if I can even burn that one. This one is a little better, but it's still pretty much over on the side. So, it, it, you know, it's not for the faint heart. You gotta, you have to be dedicated if you're going to do some of this. You have to dedicate yourself and do your research. Now, I'm not going to um, spend too much time on this right now, and I don't want, I don't want to. Um, 
influence you too much on a, a particular companies to use to purchase your supplies from if you feel you want to go ahead and make candles I do urge you to look, go on the internet though and look and do some research because do your own research every reputable candle making company supply you know they have supplies for candle making has some kind of a tutorial online they have a very, they have very good tutorials very easy to follow answer questions easily have customer service members you can talk to many of the better ones even have videos for you to watch to show you different points about the candles um i could i'm going to give you a, a link to this company this is not i've used other companies this is not the only one i use um my decision usually is influenced mostly by um shipping to be honest because most of these have the same kind of lens sell the same kind of wicks etc and dies um but the shipping can be a bitch for wax because it's heavy depending on what you buy so uh, when i in the past when i was buying for my regular candles i tried to buy as much wax locally as i could some of the other things like the wicking and things like that i bought from these other companies but this is called the lone star candle supply it's in texas I really liked it. I really liked this a lot because they have really good information. And on their website, they have, which I will link below, they have charts to show you the different sizes, the different kind of wicks and the different kind of wax blends and to tell you what it is when you want know you want to make something, what kind of wax blend is good. Let's say you want to make a soy candle. Well, you can't just make a soy candle, 100% soy candle for... I don't think for containers, but a container, a soy paraffin blend makes them maybe the best kind of container, especially if you want to color the wax. Um, certain soy blends don't take color good well. <laughs> well, so that's something to consider. So rather than listening to me, who I am not the expert, you need to listen to the experts on this site. And whether you buy from Lone Star or not, it, it's I don't I don't care I mean they're they're a good company but I don't I'm not endorsing them in any way um, but I do like the information they have I think there's another candle supply or something like that that I've watched from in the past it also has maybe I'll try to find that address for you and have you link you to that one because I think it depends on where you live if you want to have something shipped to you or what's more local to you that you could maybe pick up some of these places if you're close to that close by you can just to have a, like a curb pickup or something like that, which might be nice. Anyway, I encourage you if it's if it's if it's something you need to do, you know, if you can get candles, you're very lucky. If you can get affordable candles that that, that um, satisfy your needs, you know, that you like, that are quality, that burn the way you want them to burn, that look and smell the way you want them to look and smell, that are affordable, that are easily available to you. Is a stick with it. Don't no, you don't need to change. There's nothing that makes your candle any more magical. I don't think if you make it than if you don't. It's better to have a safe, good, reliable candle than one that you just on a whim decided to make. Um, I do know you can re. I do know you can remelt and re pour candles. So if you have a pillar candle or a couple pillar candles that are the same kind of candle. Um, from the same place you can and you want to make a new one out of two old ones or whatever you could do that you can do that and it's usually if they were pillar candles or probably and they were good pillar candles you could probably make another pillar candle out of it but you would need new wicking which sometimes you can buy you can buy wicking on a roll which is much cheaper there's a lot of tutorials out there that show you how to use that it's right and that's what i used to i've used that many times but if you want to reuse, if you want to make a pillar candle and all you have is this, you can't use this kind of wax to make a pillar candle. You can't use pillar candle wax in a container safely. You can't do that. Okay. Those are just things to keep in mind. If you're making the same kind, you can probably trust it and make the same kind. Fresh wicks. And of course, a lot of safety, a safety issues with making candles that you need to follow. 
All right, I'm going to come back in a day or two with um, the remainder of this video. I'm going to actually um, get some of these containers empty, and I'm going to re-pour, make some, make some new candles. And I will try to show you the candle as I go, and then we're going to uh, see how they work. And I'll, and I'll report back on to, to how they work, okay? So it was just something I thought I could bring you along and show you what I'm doing. I'm having fun off the edge of the earth. I am here. It just a lot of things going on as my father say. I have too many irons in the fire too often. So, but anyway, it was, it's nice to be here. When I get a chance to be here, I like to stay connected. So, as always, I'm Rebecca and I wish you blessings.